What's up, guys? Doc Danny here with the Doc and Jock Podcast, and I want to talk to you about a product I've been using recently to help with my running, and that is the Shoe Q. The Shoe Q is an insole you put in your shoes, and it has a heel cup that has these little raised up nubs on it, so you'll know if you're landing on your heel or your midfoot or your forefoot. Uh, I've been using this successfully with my own patients to help clean up some some running related issues for the past few months, and myself as well. And I really, really like it. It's really a simple solution to a problem. We know if you land in a overextended position or a heavy heel strike, you will eventually break down and get hurt. If you land in a good solid midfoot, forefoot strike under your center of mass, you're going to be faster. You're going to hurt less. So shoe Q helps solve that problem in a really simple way. So guys, you can get a set of these and save a little bit of money at the same time. If you go and use the discount code jock 10, save 10% on a shoe Q and go ahead and start working on improving your running mechanics. Your body will thank you. What's up guys. Doc Danny here with the doc and jock podcast. And today we're going to talk about cupping. Now, before we get into cupping and uh, my thoughts on cupping and why everybody is seeing this in the Olympics right now, um, before we do that, guys, head over to docandjock.com and check out a our seven-day mobility overhaul. It's on the front page of the website. This is a week of us programming mobility and movement control work for you guys, and we've got some phenomenal feedback on this so far. So head over there if you're interested and check out our seven-day mobility overhaul. So topic of the day, we're talking cupping, and I've had a handful of my uh, friends and colleagues that have texted me and or emailed me in regards to cupping because uh, if you've been watching the Olympics at all, there's swimmers with these um, big red and purple circles all over their you know shoulders and back. And uh, it's from cupping, which, which is uh, it's, it's it's a soft tissue technique that um, these uh, swimmers, I'm assuming their um, training staff, is doing with them uh, for you know trying to keep them healthy uh, for these races. So, what is cupping? Let's actually let's talk about this first, and <clears throat> I'm going to give you an idea of you know uh, my thoughts after that. But so cupping is basically where you take a plastic and or metal cup and you put it over the, uh, the skin and it's a suction cup. So it basically pulls the skin up. All right. And there's, there's a different, there's a couple different kinds. I've actually done some cupping myself as well as had cupping done to me, um, in a couple different ways. So the first way would be with a, uh, it would be a, a glass cup that they would either heat the top of it, which would cause uh, the um, skin to get pulled up after you um, put it on the skin. Or when I had it done, this was actually some like old school way of doing it. Uh, the, the the acupuncturist that I was going to see, he actually put um, a piece of paper that he lit on fire in the cup and then when uh, and then flipped it over on my back while the paper was burning and it like sucked all the, uh, the air out. So that's the kind of traditional way. Now, there's other ones where they actually have like suction cups that uh, you can actually like hook up to the top where it'll pull the air out of the of the cup as you put it on the skin. And um, so th- those are kind of the two ways you can do it, whether it be plastic or, or a, uh, a glass cup. But there's also wet and dry cupping. So dry cupping is what most likely is being done to the Olympic athletes, which is where you put it over maybe like some sort of... Um, lotion of some sort to break up some of the friction or just on this, the bare skin. Uh, and the, with, dr- with dry cupping, you don't do any type of, um, puncturing. Now with wet cupping, you would actually, it's almost like a form of bloodletting. It's actually kind of sounds like very old school and I've never actually met anybody that's had wet cupping done, but you'd basically like puncture the skin and then you would put the cup over top of it and it would draw the blood out of these puncture holes. So you're actually like bleeding them essentially. So, most likely, since I haven't seen anybody like you know with a bunch of blood um, l- looking like they have a bunch of like scabs on the cup areas, it's probably dry cupping that is going on uh, with these Olympic athletes. So, why would you want to do it, right? What's the concept of this? And I'll kind of give you kind of my idea of what what I perceive is going on with cupping, and uh, and then we'll kind of talk about the research a little bit. But uh, so cupping is, in my opinion, is basically to help bring blood to an area. And there's a lot of techniques that we do that do that. Um, you could say massage is a variation of that, trying to get blood flow and circulation through areas through pressure, um, scraping techniques, whether it be like Graston or a stem or, um, the hawk grips, you know, things like that are very similar. You're scraping it over the skin and it's, uh, kind of bringing, uh, kind of blood flow to that area as well as you irritate the area. Um, and then even maybe you could make a parallel to even with something like dry needling, where you're going to stimulate an internal kind of local bleeding response in certain areas. So, um, you know, that's kind of the intent of it. And I think the reason it's gotten so much, 
um, you know, interest is the fact that it looks very kind of unique. It's very odd to see a big circular, um, red spot on a Michael Phelps shoulder. Right. And, um, and so, you know, it kind of reminds me of the, the year aces was maybe like two Olympics ago where everybody was kinesio taping the hell out of each other, uh, with a pink and blue tape. And, and look, there's a place for kinesio tape and, and, uh, and, and things like that. But, um, I think it definitely got way more exposure than maybe necessary because it was on a big stage of the Olympics. So I think cupping is kind of doing that right now. Um, so, you know, the areas that would help would be something like superficial fascia. So the, the connection between the skin and the cover of the muscle is in in the opinion of colleagues of mine that do this is that's what they really feel like they're going to get some benefit from is, um, being able to lift that up a little bit and and break up some of the sliding surfaces that can get uh, matted down. Now you can also, if you put this over something that is like, uh, like a lotion of some kind or oil, you can actually put it on the skin and slide it around. And this is actually uh, one way that I've seen some pretty interesting results for people that are having like it band issues or things that are more superficial, like the lateral elbow, um, somewhere in that range. And, you know, I mean, anecdotally, I can tell you, I've seen some people that have done pretty well with it. Um, you know, I've also seen people that didn't get any response from it. So I think it's like many things, uh, you know, there's definitely some anecdotal evidence out there where people swear by it and other people just don't really get much out of it at all. So, you know, looking at, the research and what's out there, there's not a ton. And I did, I, and I didn't do like a massively thorough search. I'd spent a little bit of time trying to find the most kind of dense research, um, that I could, that I could find on PubMed. And I found a study from 2011 where they actually, it's, it's a combination of a bunch of other studies. So they basically, these are called systematic reviews, which is, is what you want to try to find if you're kind of getting an over overall kind of idea of what the research is like on a certain topic. So I found a systematic review of a few different um, articles that that have been published, and this was in 2011, so it was pretty recent. And uh, you know, it's it the basically the conclusion of this was that there there's some research to show that's beneficial for for pain, cupping being beneficial for pain, but it also says it states that. Uh, even this uh, indication, there's, there's doubts that it, that it may do anything physiologically. Um, and that's kind of like the conclusion that they have. So they kind of, you know, they're not really sure if there, there's definitely not enough evidence to say one way or the other. Um, and if anything, that's been shown to be, you know, uh, maybe beneficial for some, for some pain. Uh, and, and, and that's about it. But now look, now if we talk about research, there's plenty of things that are contradictory that people do all the time and they wouldn't, they wouldn't swear to do anything else. Right. Uh, even something like, like uh, something that is in my practice, I use a lot, which is dry needling. You know, there's studies that show that it works. There's studies that show that it doesn't work. There are studies that show that it does one thing and not another. And it's very contradictory. Um, so, you know, for me, I think what you have to do is say, is, is there risk there? Well, with cupping, with dry cupping, there's probably not, uh, any, really like massive risk with wet cupping. I wouldn't do that if somebody held a gun to my head. I mean, I don't want you poking me with needles and then sucking blood out of me with a cup, you know, like no thanks. Um, I'd rather not do that in terms of infection and all kinds of other crap that could get associated with that. But dry cupping, I've had it done to me and, um, you know, I didn't have any adverse effects at all. I had a bunch of big circles on my body. They were purple and red you know, it looked like you got in a fight with a vacuum cleaner, but, um, you know, I didn't have any adverse effects and, and, uh, and honestly, I couldn't tell you if it really made much of a difference for me or not. I can't, I, I didn't really feel like I've, uh, I, I did, but, um, you know, I have seen anecdotally it worked pretty well for, for things like the IT band and, and the side of the elbow. And, and so for you, I, I would say my best advice is, you know, if you're struggling with something and you know, somebody that is a provider that does that, that you're, that you trust, then, give it a shot. I mean, you're not going to have any negative implications from it. Um, but is there anything to really back it, uh, substantially in the, in the research? Um, they're not, not so much from, from what I could find. Uh, the other thing is you have to be careful who you go see to get some of this stuff done as well, because technically some of this stuff is not even really in practice acts. So you could have somebody, that maybe has minimal training, um, doing cupping and, uh, they, maybe they put too much suction in it and it hurts you where they leave it on too long and, and they create a, you know, a pretty big bruise. It can cause some, some swelling when they're trying to deal with an issue. So, um, just be aware of who you go and see, make sure they're a licensed professional and, and that they have some training in it and they didn't just buy some stuff off of Amazon and start, and start cupping people because, uh, 
Michael Phelps does it right. So, you know, uh, other options that you have besides cupping too is, you know, you have, uh, like scraping techniques like Gua Sha, um, you know, the, the, that's something you can try or, uh, A-stem, Hawk grips, kind of those, uh, that's a very, I would, in my opinion, I would say that's very similar. And you also get some slight bruising with that as well. So if you're averse to cupping, that may be something else that you want to try. And I've seen really good uh, results with that personally, with my own practice, as well as myself having, uh, had that done on myself for different injuries. So, um, that may be also a good alternative for you to try. So, um, cupping where I stand on it, you know, that's, that's my stance. There's not a ton of evidence for it. I'm not opposed to it necessarily. Um, and if it helps you, it helps you. And let's be honest with, um, top tier athletes. Sometimes it's not just about what the evidence shows, you know, is it really working or not? If they feel like it's working, it's worth doing, you know, cause if Michael Phelps feels like, man, my right shoulder's rock solid cause I've got it cupped by the best cupper in the world, you know, then you know what? He's probably going to swim better and, uh, he's probably gonna be more confident and, and, um, he'll win gold medals, which he's already won a ton of them. Right. So, um, got to keep that in mind too. Sometimes what these athletes do, is it just for their body or some of it just for their kind of mental, uh, you know, standpoint and of how, how they feel in terms of confidence. So, um, that's my standpoint on cupping. Uh, so stop texting me and emailing me about what I think about cupping, uh, cause, uh, just send you to this podcast. So all right, guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy this one and send us a iTunes review question. If you have any questions you'd like for us to answer on the podcast on one of these Friday episodes. All right, take care.